Hey, what's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new tool released by Ubiquity. Now this tool helps you to design and plan your networks. So with me moving here shortly, I figured what better test of Ubiquity's new network planning tool than using it to plan the network for my new house. So come along for the ride guys, and we're gonna take a look at Ubiquity Design Center. Now for the planning, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. We're just gonna kind of plan out our access point placement, some camera stuff. So even though I don't have the floor plan for the basement or the upstairs area yet, the majority of our networking is gonna be taking place on the first floor. So this will still give us a really good foundation even though we don't have all of the plans. So to plan this stuff out, I'm gonna be using the Ubiquity Design Center. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here. I have just a basic floor plan here, which is a picture of a soundboard and lighting setup. But so what we're gonna do is to get started, we're gonna go to upload plan. Now, if we take a look at the plan that we have, it's in <laughs> it's in Excel. So each cell here represents two feet by two feet. So we take a look at it all. I saved it as a PDF. So I can just come over here to browse for files and I can just come over here to home sheet one PDF. Okay, I can name it, let's do MTS home. That's just what I'm gonna call it for right now. I can click on upload. Now keep in mind, you cannot rename your floor plans or change out your floor plan. So if you mess up, catch your mistake now. It's one of the downfalls of this design center, but it still works pretty good. Now to get started, please set the floor plans, ceiling height and scale. Now, because I know that one of these cubes is two feet by two feet, I can come over here and I'm just gonna set that the ceiling height is and I don't use the metric system. I use the Imperial system because I'm in Missouri and we don't know how to do things. So I'm gonna do 12 feet two meters. I should know this, but I don't. That's our ceiling height. So we can come over here, enter that in, boom. Now I've pasted in here 0.6096 meters, which is roughly two feet. Now what we have to do is we have to left click here on what we know is two feet. So this cell here is two feet. So I'm gonna just, you know, create my little line here. And now it knows that is what two feet is. I hit save, boom. It now knows that it's one pixel for every 65 pixels. Now we have our scaling and we can get started. Now this is a tool that also helps us to figure out our F. So to figure out our F, it needs to know kind of where our walls are and you know what type of walls we have. So what we can do is we can come up here to this build tool and we can click on outer wall. Now you can draw a room. So I can draw like an outer room being the garage here. And I can, you just click at a point and click at another point. And there it built us a room with an outdoor wall. I'm gonna delete this wall because that's an indoor wall. So I can grab an inner wall, say, hey, you start there and you end there. I can grab an inner room. And again, with a room, I can just grab two points. Boom, built me a room. Inner room, I can come over here, build another inner room. So now that we have some walls built, I'm gonna go ahead and keep building my exterior walls. So this will take a little bit, but I'll get back to you guys when I'm done. Okay, so I've built out all of our walls here. We have everything kind of masked off where it needs to be. And this over here I have set up is just kind of our server rack for now. I've put it a decent distance away from the house just so that way uh, when we do cabling length, I know I want it to be around here, but in the basement. This way I have this distance here for accounting for extra cable length. So what we wanna do now is I'm gonna rotate things just to make it easier for us to see on one screen. This is the front area with our, our porch and then we have our back patio and stuff. So if we come over here and click on our floor plan button again, we can come down to wall sockets. Now wall sockets are just our standard sets of two ports. So in the garage starting off, I wanna have lots of ports. So I'm gonna have ports over here and there. So that's two, four ports. Beautiful, the master bedroom, I wanna have another two ports in here. The laundry room, I'm gonna put two ports in here. This garage, I'm gonna put two ports in here. In the kitchen area, I'm gonna have a couple ports. I'm not sure where I'm gonna actually put these in the kitchen, but I am gonna be putting ports in my kitchen. In the pantry, or on the wall of the pantry by the table, we're gonna have some more ports. Coming into this bedroom over here, I wanna have ports on this wall and ports on this wall. Because if I think about it, if you have a bed here, placement for a desk just kind of makes sense to go right here or right here. I'm not sure if this is gonna actually be a cutout. If this is a cutout, it's gonna be four feet wide, not really enough room for a desk. So I'm not gonna bother using that, but yeah, these should be, this should be good placement so far. So if we come over here where our built-in television area is gonna be, 
We're gonna put four ports here because I wanna do all of my switching downstairs. I don't wanna have extra switches upstairs. The covered patio, we're gonna put some network jacks outside. Boom. And just to give us a count of network jacks, because I'm gonna be having more ports upstairs and downstairs, I'm just gonna place a bunch of these extra guys here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. I'm gonna say that we'll have maybe six ports upstairs and downstairs in the basement, we might have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Now downstairs, I want to be an extremely flexible space. I want to have, you know, ports on the walls. I'm going to have a media center. That media center is not really going to change, but I want to have desks on wheels for different projects. I want to have computers on desks on wheels, all that stuff. I want it to be an extremely flexible space where I can move everything around. So I'm going to have network jacks up in the ceiling. I'm going to have plugs up in the ceiling and I'm going to need some flexible cable for that. Yeah, because I don't want to do anything where it's, you know, super rigid, like installation cable that's going to be going from the ceiling down to a, you know, a mobile desk. I'm going to have to figure something out for that. But I think past me might have a solution to this, as well as future me. So take it away, past me. Okay, so working in the live AV and production space, as well as the enterprise area, I get to see some weird standards crossovers. And so here's one of them that I found that I thought I'd share. So we have, you know, your regular network cable here, but there's also a stage version of it called EtherCon. And so it has a locking connector and this locking connector would go into a plate like this. Now this plate can accept a regular ethernet connection. You just pop it in and then you can use the tab to pull it out, but it can also use EtherCon. So EtherCon is essentially just an ethernet connector with a cool boot shielding thing around it. So it goes in and it locks like this is not coming out. And then you push the button and the cable comes out. Now stage grade ethernet is much more flexible than regular ethernet, which I really like. You use a stranded cable instead of solid core, but you can get it in multiple different varieties. Um, here's an example of some more soft cable. This cable is also very soft, which I very much appreciate. It's, it's very flexible, it's very soft. I mean, I could throw this out, it would flatten itself down. It's not gonna hold whatever shape it was wrapped up in. And so this is what I wanna use for downstairs because I wanna have everything on desks. I wanna have everything on desks on wheels. I wanna be able to roll stuff out, roll stuff around. And so I'm essentially gonna need cable snakes and I want them to be flexible and soft. So I wanna use this type of cable. Thanks past me, that really helped. Future me, do you have anything you'd like to add? Future Jack here, got an Amazon box. Gonna open it up here with a knitting needle. Um, yeah, so this has some fun stuff in it. First, we have this Aria Live uh, stage grade ethernet cable. So this is like a polyurethane jacketed ethernet cable, I assume. So I'm gonna take a look at this in a second. All right, so I have the Aria Live Flex Soft cable here and I've unwrapped it, uh, laid it all out and did my first initial wrap of it. And just right off the bat, you know how some cables feel cheap? I mean, they just feel like, here, like this guy just, it just feels like, you know, you got this from the dollar store. This feels nothing like that. This feels very much like a mic cable, like a good mic cable. I use GLS cable and then I use Neutrik connectors, but um, yeah, this feels very similar to that type of cable. Uh, speaking of Neutrik, here we have some of the Neutrik um, EtherCon connectors. So you can just lock it in there. Locks very nicely. But with a regular EtherCon jack that you can add to like an existing cable along with kind of most other ethercon cables yeah that's great they can plug into your ethercon jack and so can your existing ethernet cables but you can't use ethercon with you know a regular rj45 port because these are just pass-through connectors it just doesn't work these guys have a removable end so you can twist that off and now you just have a regular rj45 port which is shielded by the way that you can plug in and it's still not coming out because it has a button release at the bottom. So instead of using the, it still uses the plastic tab, but it has part of the connector here that depresses the plastic tab. So you don't have to worry about it breaking off. And to show you what I was talking about with flexibility of the cables, I'm gonna throw all these cables out here. Um, I'm ditching fiber because this was like my really nice fiber cable. I paid like a hundred bucks for this. Uh, it has, you know, your two fiber lines here that then go into one. This is a very nice cable, but it broke. I'm just tired of the fragileness of fiber and you know the special wall plates, the special connectors, all that stuff. I just wanna go back. But this is what I mean when I say this cable is flexible. I'm gonna throw some of these cables down on the ground and we're gonna see how they lay. 
All right, so starting off, we have some installation cable that I just put some ends on. That's pretty bad. Next, we're gonna take an off the shelf stranded Cat6 cable and throw it out. Better, but as you can see, we still have some lumps. All right, next we have the Aria Live stage cable. And so this cable's 50 feet, so I'm not gonna throw the whole cable, but I'll throw a good bit of it. Look at that. The part that goes on the ground goes straight. This is perfect. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Wow, cool. All right, so now that we have our cable picked out for what we're gonna use to get to the mobile workstations, we can just kind of come in here and take a step back and look at what we have. So if we wanna come over here to this uh, materials list, quantity of 44, so we have 44 jacks. Now that's a lot of jacks. I'm gonna need multiple switches for this. I don't think I'm even gonna be able to get away with a single 48 port switch. What we have to do next is access point placement. So what we can do is come back to our floor plans. Now we can come over here and select access points and we can go to value because that's what you get to show the APAC pros and all that stuff. But for outside in the backyard, I know I want a mesh pro. I'm gonna put the mesh pro right here. That should give us good Wi-Fi coverage to the backyard area. And for the interior of the house, I wanna go Wi-Fi 6, but at the same time, it's like, eh. So I'm just gonna go with the APAC LR, even though I hate the LR access point, the new Wi-Fi 6 version is way better. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one right here in this hallway. We're gonna put one of them in the kitchen area, one of them in the garage here, and one of them in the bigger garage. Now we will also have one down in the basement, one upstairs, and one outside in a back shed area type thing that we're gonna be building. So let's take a look at our topology. Our topology shouldn't show us anything right now, but you can see it gives us our pricing for different things and gives us you know lists of our equipment. What we can do is we can start cabling it and it will then tell us what um, our topology is of how everything gets connected. All right, so now that we have everything placed here, we can come down to our racks. So I'm just gonna go with a 24U rack, even though I'm gonna be going with a 48U rack. And we can just say that this is going in our server room here. We can then come over to our rack. And now it recommends that we have start with a UDM Pro. I'm gonna turn off auto mode. So we're going to get rid of that UDM Pro. We're gonna add it back, but I just want it in a different position. I'm gonna have a 24 port patch panel right here. We're gonna start off with another patch panel, but it's gonna get moved down to our second U. And we're going to have a 48 port PoE switch in the center of that. Coming down from that, we're gonna have another patch panel and I'm going to need a different switch. I'm gonna use the 16XG for this one because this is gonna be replaced with a 10 gig switch from Microtix, specifically this Microtix switch. I don't really like Microtix switching software, but it's a really nice switch still because it's 12 10 gig ports that are backwards compatible with five gig, two and a half gig, one gig, and 10 100. So this will be a fantastic switch for my uses. I don't wanna run fiber cables all throughout the house. I am gonna do a fiber run from the basement to the attic, and I'm gonna be running fiber to the garage, to across the street, and to the shed in the back. So I will have fiber, but I don't want fiber running to you know different like wall ports like I have right now in my house. I wanna do everything with RJ45 to keep it really simple. It's gonna cost a little bit more, but right now the costs have come down so significantly that I can actually justify doing it. So this looks like a, our rack for right now, a smart power RPS, I don't want that. Built-in PDU. Apparently Ubiquiti's rack comes with a built-in PDU that I don't want. All right, so this is the stuff that I know we're gonna have right now. Now, what we're gonna wanna add as well is we're gonna throw in our Dream Machine Pro. That can just go right there. And I think that's good for, for now. Yeah, this should be a pretty strong rack setup for us. I can't see anything really wrong with it right now. It's gonna just be, you know, right here. You can see everything in it. And next I'm gonna get around to cabling everything and placing down our cameras. So if I come over here to building and we do cables, Let's try auto cable. Okay. Okay. All right, auto cable. This is awful, but okay. Uh, let's see, how many cables is it actually running over here? Is it running our multiple cables that we need? I can't tell. I can uncheck devices. 
change all wires. I can hide and reshow the cables. Instead of them being wired like this, I'm gonna have them all wired, you know, going in line with beams and all that stuff. But because we're building the house, I'm not gonna have to do cabling after the fact. I'm gonna be able to install the cables as the house is being built. So I can have all the cables done really nicely, really cleanly, and I don't have to go in and drill a whole bunch of holes afterwards and, you know, fish cables through drywall. It's gonna be super easy, super simple. And I'll take you guys along for the ride for that, but that's gonna be in many, many months because we haven't even started on the house yet. Right now, we're still working with the city to get our plan approved. So we're gonna click on finish there and just be like, yeah, okay, that works. One of the things that we can also do after we've cabled everything is, and we have our access points placed is we can come over here and show our five gigahertz coverage, our 2.4 gigahertz coverage and our cameras. We don't have cameras placed yet, but our five gigahertz coverage should be pretty good. All right, so this says that we should have pretty good Wi-Fi coverage throughout everything. Uh, the master closet is gonna have everything. Outdoors should be really good. So these two access points here, the LR access points on the ceiling, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get away with those because of, you know, mother approval. But if not, I can go with in-wall access points and that's not gonna be a problem because hopefully Ubiquity will have Wi-Fi 6 variants in them by the time that we get started on this project. I'm gonna pray and hope that they do. So now that we're done with our wireless, I'm gonna come down to cameras and I'm gonna grab a G4 Protect doorbell because why not? So this is gonna be the entrance to the house. We can put, uh, it's gonna see this way. We're gonna take our G4 bullet here. We're gonna place a, a bullet camera right there. It's gonna be looking this way. We can grab another G4 bullet camera, have it facing this way. Another G4 bullet facing this way. Another G4 facing our side. Really our backyard isn't something super necessary because anybody that's coming in through the back would be caught through the front cameras. So if we just put up some G3 flex cameras here, we should be good. G4 bullet facing the back. Okay, so I finished up our camera placement and I replaced those G3 flexes with G4 bullets back here. And I put G3 flexes here in the garage. That should, you know, just be good enough to cover anybody that might wanna break in the garage, I guess. And if we come here to show our camera placement, we have essentially full coverage just about everywhere outside. Unless people wanna start chiseling away at the corner of our garage, we're gonna be fine. Again, yeah, so this is this is some really strong camera coverage. I'm really happy with this. All right, so I think that wraps it up. Guys, what do you think? Is this a pretty strong network? What are you guys running at your house? And do you have any more ideas for me? And did I miss anything? That is important. If I missed anything, please let me know because I want to do this network right. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.